I could see like the the reflection of the moon, right? On the steel. I can hear the rattle of the cans. I can see the fumes of the paint <laughs> evaporating. Yeah. And I tell you what, it was it was one of the moments where you just go, I'm fucking all in. Killer Killer Official Street Cards Culture TV Instagram UK Frontline Beatbox Created Killer Killer And we need to talk about world music and street culture Killer Killer Podcast Hey Here we go Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Killer Killer Podcast, we say in live and direct central London or as central as you need to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. I said before, I said 450 times. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers, the people out there making it what it is. Trust me, we don't do it for our health, certainly don't do it for money. It's get out of bed stuff you know that's what we do on a daily this is a street culture and if you're a fan of it you can get a television app free download iphone android for you street culture sports We've got mini docs big docs small docs and of course the tourist podcast that you love um we are in for a right treat this gentleman transfers transcends himself across different mediums of art without question graffiti writer um, in the blood, taking highs of 20 years, would you believe? And back in, and without even a blink, he's had a, an association um, with different areas of art in a very specific way. His style, you can tell a mile off. E one's reputable, only inside the place. Yes, brother. <laughs> How, How are you? you? Yeah, good to have, good to be here, man. Kick that off with a good intro, yes, didn't man. we? <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me on, man. I've got to be honest with you. I mean, as but we had a chat before we jumped on. You understand? Uh, you rarely do this stuff. No, it's a first for me to be honest. Like you know, I come back a couple of years ago, and um, since being back and obviously getting on like Instagram and stuff, like that's transformed the graph scene. Instagram for me, mm. like good or bad, like people have their opinions on it, mm. but it's definitely changed the landscape do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and in terms of just like be people being able to contact you and stuff like I never had that before do you know what I mean like back in the day when you're just doing graph and stuff it was old school how you met people mm. and stuff nowadays you could just message someone mm. on insta and so I've had quite a few like opportunities come up and you know people who like offering stuff and yeah, I've just said no, 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 no. Wait until the time's right. And and I can't stress anymore that when you see Only's archive, you know, on his Instagram and you see the art that you do produce, and I'm going to broaden it to the word art, not just graph, because I know you're a graffiti writer at its core, but the fills and the way in which you create your design and, and the placement and the style mm. of you, just everything about it, the use of space... Um, it, it, it's quite trendsetting of its time, and that leans very nicely to Instagram, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. Instagram's definitely given me the opportunity to get what I've done out there. Do you know what I mean? Like, because back in the day, again, when you're a writer, you don't give a shit about Instagram. Like, you know, even taking photos of stuff. Mm. It's all about just getting your getting your tag up, getting your doves up, get, get your track size, whatever it is. But now, obviously, Instagram's about, and it's kind of like, that's almost like your portfolio, do you know mm. what I mean? And that allows you to reach, like, a, a wider horizon, if you like. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't mind it. I'd, like, I've, I would say it's a positive for me, personally. I try not to be on there all the time or get involved in too much shit. I just mm. post my stuff, leave... And um, come back when I've got something else to show. Trying do you know what I mean? to get involved too deeply. It's so hard in uh, 2023, yeah. isn't it? Hey? Yeah, yeah, especially if you get like negative comments and stuff. It's like, yeah. don't even entertain it. Do you know what uh, I mean? Just fuck that off. I can't imagine you getting bad comments on your work, dude. It's just un... No, I mean, there's only... A You're only such yeah. your own lane. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I get a lot. Mm. But I'm just saying for those people that do, mm. like, don't get too involved in that shit. Yeah, do you know exactly. what I mean? Just do, do 
put your thing out there, mm. let people make of it what they will, mm. and then step back. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Don't worry too much about it. Don't let it get you down. So <laughs> don't let it get you down. E1. East. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So East London writers out here. Talk to, talk to us about E1. What's going on? Yeah, so I mean, like, first and foremost, like, let me just get this straight. So I am, I'm East London. That's where I'm from. That's born and bred. That's where I consider myself, like, my art, my graph is based, like, East London. Um, the E1 in my, like, in my name, so mm. obviously it's only E1. That's what like, my Instagram is. Yep. It didn't always. It wasn't always that way. It used to be only HMZ, which was one of the crews that I was in. Right. And um, unfortunately, I was pretty much the only person putting up HMZ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it was like a <laughs> bit of a crowd. one-man crew. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and um, like, I still like they're still all my pals. Like, mm. but none of them are active. And uh, I just, I had a lot of people saying to me all the time, oh, what does HMZ mean and all the rest of it. And I just thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to have a little rebrand. And um, like, I come up with, like, it's a difficult one. With only, Mm. right, the word only in itself, it's not like a standalone word. Like, what I mean by that is, say, for example, you have like the word graph after only. Only becomes like a secondary, so it's only graph. Ooh, Do you know what yeah. I mean? Or like only London. Yeah. Or like the only is not the standalone word. So it's hard to come up with a word that makes you unique but doesn't overshadow only. Do you know what I mean? What? Now that's thought through because you're absolutely right. You're probably sitting there on the sofa one evening saying, yeah, only's great, except I just cannot be, <laughs> you know. Because in, yeah. in some self-fulfilling prophecy kind of way, you were the only member of the crew. You were yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being yeah, the only yeah, member yeah, of the crew. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's pretty lonely being yeah. the only member. Yeah. 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 Who else was um, in the crew at the time, by the way? Oh, man. Like, I'm going back, like, a long time now. So, like, you know, people in East London will know these people. I don't know whether, like, the broader scene will know Let's them get them much, out there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Run them up. You had... Um, Fella called Rims, mm-hmm. okay. Um, that you had Mez, which M E Z, M E Z, but he then later changed the Heart of London. Mm. So most of people know because he he moved into like sort of fashion, jewelry, and stuff like that. Got ya. And um, I think he still does all that now, to be honest. And um, yeah, so he's called he's called himself Heart of London. Nice. Um, there was someone else called Har One. There was um, Wanners, who's pretty active at the yeah, minute. Big up Wanners. Yeah, big up Wanners. Uh, you had Earl. Yeah, um, Earl. Oh, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Earl. Wicked. Um, you had, and then I think later on, this was after my time, but then you had like Slack and Lead and some of the D13 nice. guys wow. were in it as well. Um, and yeah, as I said, like when I come back, I kind of, I didn't really feel like the HMZ was representing who I was and what I was trying to do moving mm-hmm. forward. If you know, I mean, it wasn't like I was sort of letting go of HMZ, but being the only kind of active one mm. put it up, it just mm. seemed a bit pointless, if you know what I mean. Mm. So um, I've got a little sort of workshop lockup in E1, mm. and I thought to myself, E1's kind of like, you know, almost like putting like your postcode at the end of your name, like yeah. the old some of the old school writers yeah, used to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it was like only E1, and it was just kind mm. of a, a nod to the fact that I'm East London, it, you know, E1 was just like a nice sounding end to it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Only E1, done. Yeah, and it's definitive as well. Yeah. You ain't, you're from there and you ain't going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that yeah. And conscious, that, that, that historically yeah, yeah, yeah. place. And yeah. that's like, that's become like my base, if you mm. know what I mean. So I'm based there, that's where my art is based, if you know what I mean. E- e- East has got, a, a, I mean, the, the resurgence of, Graph over there, you know, Alan Gardens uh, outwards yeah, yeah, is yeah. absolutely. F- for, we get a lot of people that aren't from the UK, so I've got to big it up. East London is most definitely uh, popping. It's uh, it's very much our our art basil, for, your, for a better example. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the good, the bad, the great, and the ugly. They'll they'll congregate around yeah, there and yeah. create the awesome. Um, well, it's changed graph. so much, mate. Honestly, like going back for like, I was when I was a writer. That was probably, I don't know, 97 to mm. 2000. That was when I was, like, most active. Mm. And that area had, like, no graph in it. It had, like, bits of illegal graph here and there, do you know what I mean? But, like, nothing like what it is today. You know, like, 
every spare wall is covered. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, so we're talking it's, 97, right? Yeah. So talk to me about talk to me about what in as much little detail as you like, what East London of that area and time was like before the graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like well, before like the street art kind of movement, if you like, mm. like back when it was just purely graph. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I loved it, to be honest. I, I lived and breathed it. I mean, like, I, I'll, I'll tell you, like, briefly, like, what my, how I got into graph. A thousand percent jumped the straight in. <laughs> and, um, and then, like, to the point where I stopped. Yeah. Um, Get in, and, do it. Yeah, nah. So, I mean, like, essentially, like most people, I started secondary school. So, like, you, you, you start off this, like, innocent kid in primary school. You go to secondary school and it's like, right. The fucking world's my oyster, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's first? <laughs> no, it's, well, like you get you get a bit of freedom. You get like you know it, the world opens up to you, mm. and you start seeing things that you wouldn't normally have like taken notice of. Mm. And um, for me personally, my first experience of graph was, yeah, as I say, in secondary school. So there was a couple of writers. They didn't go on to do much later mm. in life, but for me personally they were kind of the inspiration for me getting into graph. Nice. One of them's quite a pretty cool uh, portrait artist now called uh, Alex Chappell. Right. He's on Instagram, like, big up Alex, by big the way. Big up Alex, hold yeah, tight. Yeah. Um, he was, him and his mate, they got me into graph, essentially. So they were a year above me at school. They wrote um, Trip and Spark, right? Okay. And um, so this is how the story goes. So... I was fucking mesmerised. I started seeing these like trip and spark tags around the school and I was like, what the fuck's going on here? They're writing the same thing over and over again, like repeating it. And every time you see it, you think, there it is again, there it is again. And I'm kind of like, good, pennies dropping. Yeah. It's like, all right. So anyway, one day I got myself a little sketch pad and a pen and I started like copying the trip and the spark tag. So I've, I've, I've like done a little sketch of it, went home that night, practised it, Come in the next day, and I thought, right, well, I'm going to write Trip and Spark as well. So <laughs> I'll help. You know what I mean? Like, I'll help. Like, you know, you're, you're trying to get this name out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in. I'm in, mate. That's so so, <laughs> <laughs> so I started writing Trip and Spark <laughs> yeah. around the school. And you can imagine quite quickly, that's come on top. Yeah. I've got a little time. warning from the, from the two of them. Oi, stop it. Like, don't be writing our tags. And I still couldn't kind of get it. I couldn't quite grasp, like, why would you not want me to help get your fucking name out there. And it was like, little did I know that your name was totally independent to you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You can't be fucking writing someone else's tag and biting it. Like I've never heard <laughs> that before. It's absolutely <laughs> wicked. Love so it. So anyway, a couple more warnings passed. Still didn't like stop. And then I got pulled aside by Alex's mate who wrote Spark and um, he pulled a butterfly knife out on me, flipped it round, held it to my throat and he went, listen here. He went... If you write my tag one more fucking time, you're losing fingers. Fucking hell. <laughs> Deadly fuck. serious. Held at knife point. How old were you? 12. Jesus, East London don't play. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, right, okay, we got to stop now. Do you know what I mean? But and I, don't, I can't tell you what possessed me. I carried on. Just carried right, on. Yeah, I did it. I did it again. Right? Why? And, Why um, did you do that? F- Naivety, mate. Honestly, I don't know. Like, that's all I can put it down to. Twelve years old, didn't know any better. OCD. Don't know. I, honestly, I can't give you a logical reason why anyone held at knife point would carry on doing something. Right? So, did it one more time, and mm. then um, I was uh, I was walking through the playground, and they came up to me, and they went, "Here's a pen, Joe." Uh, uh, so I, yeah, I here's a pen. And um, they said, uh, yeah, why don't you go and tag up the toilets upstairs? And uh, so I was like, yeah, sweet. So I took the pen that they gave mm. me, went upstairs, went in the toilet, and the toilet was completely bombed the fuck out of, <laughs> but with the head teacher's name, is a wanker all over it. I'm talking all over the mirrors, all over the walls. They'd rip, trip spark everywhere, bombed the fuck out of it. Okay? Oh, no. I was like... Oh, I don't really know what's going on here, but I might as well put another trip and spark up while I'm here. <laughs> in walks the head teacher with his name is a wanker all over the room. It's set up. They set me up. They give me the pen, the pen that was used and to do it. The, as you were saying this, I thought this is, gonna, this is how this is going to play out. Te- uh, yeah, head teacher come in, 
I was in fucking bits. Big trouble. Big yeah. trouble. So anyway, that happened. Parents come to school, all the rest of it. Next day, crunch meeting with me and my crew, my, my, my lot, my age group. And I went, listen, lads, we've got to stop writing Trip and Spark. It's done. Do you know what I mean? I'm still quizzing the, in, the, 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 the calculativeness of somebody to go and do that in a toilet. and yeah. get, It's like an episode of Neighbours. How did they know they was going to get away with that? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because they could have been caught. Yeah. But anyway, so that was like me learning very young. You don't fucking copy yeah. people's tags. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I still believe that now. Now, you were a good I mean? age to have got away with that. When you, yeah. If you were in your 30s, there would be a different conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so from there on in, it was... It was yeah, so from that point onwards, started like come up with my own tag, moved on. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and then it was quite a quick sort of rise for me. So I, out of my lot, I was always the one that was probably more most into it. If mm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a um, a flyover near me. You know, like when you get the flyovers and you get the uh, the concrete walls yeah, underneath them. Absolutely, like, it's a classic place. Oh, tight Latimer Road. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I started painting down the, my local flyover and then I ended up meeting someone down there that was quite a pivotal moment for me. Um, there is something I do probably just want to quickly say. The about, caveat being... Uh, about this person, right? Because this person's not very liked in the scene. Yeah. and But it's a, it's a key part to my story. And so just so I get this like straight, if yeah. you know what I mean... I painted with this person for maybe a year or so. It's a disclaimer, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I think you got her in this yeah. day and age. Um, painted with this person. I, I'll say who it is. Like I, I, I knew him as Knock basically, mm -hmm. and he went on to write Noir mm -hmm. uh, ATS. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, he's ended up being um, like basically like a. a a grass, basically. Okay. Um, and like a bad one at that. Right. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of it, to be honest. And yeah. I know that he's very disliked in the scene. Okay. But it doesn't stop. It, you know, I mean, you can't delete what happened in your past no, no, and your no. history. Do you know what I mean? So no. he was a part of that. Yeah. A part of me rising to where I got to. And then what he went on to do after that is, is, is his, his business. business. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. as I'm talking about him, I know people's bloods are going to be boiling. Yeah. And they're hearing his name, yeah. but that's, it is what it is. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. that bit out of the way, yeah. I met Nock. I'm going to call him Nock because that's what his tag was when I met him. Mm -hmm. Right. So I met him down underneath a flyover and um, we just got on quite well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, he was coming back onto the scene. I was just kind of getting into it. Mm -hmm. And he kind of took me under his wing, really. Um, so showed me loads of plots and best places to rack paint and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, and, yeah, so we um, yeah painted together for probably about a year, I'd say. Oh. Um, and then we were at Plasto. I don't know if you know, like Plasto doesn't really get painted anymore. I think it's a bit South on top east, there. Yeah. No, Plasto's east. Yeah, east. yeah, on a district line. Okay. There was a Hall of Fame there. It was like a, a um, like a bridge over the tracks mm -hmm. and then you had a, a flat wall either side. Okay. It was like pedestrianised sort of bit. And um, we were up there painting one day and then um, there was a, a, a fairly like prominent crew from East London called LDS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, strictly train writers mm -hmm. and they passed through that day and um they cottoned on to the fact that knock had a van and he drove and none of them drove and they quickly invited him to come and paint like a yard with him that night because he, he had the car right. and we was all from east london anyway mm -hmm. but part of the package was muggins here <laughs> <laughs> i came along for the ride do you know what i mean so i was only like <laughs> 15, something like that. Wow. Um, these boys were all sort of like in their 20s. What was your mum and dad thinking at the time? They didn't know. They didn't know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I love that. So anyway, d done, done Plasto during the day and then we were doing a yard that night and this was my first train. So I was fucking, yeah, I, I was, and t like, I don't know what the word is really, like, shit myself really. <laughs> but like, but in the same, same sense, looking forward to it. 
anticipating it. So well, we're um, talking about back in the day right now. This is all a past tense, you know. It's a nice little story and should not be tried at home. What's the feeling that you had when you were... G- give me more detail. Was it anxiety? Was it, what yeah, was it? well, no, like, sh- do you know, like, when you're, you're doing something you've never done before, obviously there's a level, like, there's a balance between, like, um, looking forward to it. Yeah but also dreading it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's you're walking a fine line mm. when you're going into somewhere like a train yard. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's not for the faint hearted. Yeah. Um, so I definitely would faint heart. I would be <laughs> fainting on a, I'll be crawling. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's not to everyone's, it's just like the roller coaster without the, without the safety. Harness. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. Um, and yeah. So that first experience for me, was a massive one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but you were so young. Yeah, 15. Yeah, young, yeah, dude. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I, would, I don't think I would have got that opportunity at that age had I not been at the right place at the right time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it was, if I'd just been up there on my own, that opportunity wouldn't have come my way. But yeah. I wanted to seize it. So I did. And we went that night. And um, yeah, we... Like got down onto the tracks and there was a, a layup of two trains and. Um, what, you, what was the feeling when you when you looked at the trains? You must have just been the fucking I'll, machine I'll monsters. I'll tell you, mate. Honestly, there's a moment that I will never ever forget. Tell right? me. And it's we got close to the trains and we heard someone in the yard, and I was fucking ready to bolt. I'm done. Like I'm hearing footsteps. Mm. You like on the tracks? You got the old um, like the stones and that, mm. and you can hear footsteps do you know what I mean mm. and I'm fucking done and like the one of the one of the uh, the fellas in one of the writers in the crew was like chill 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 just st- just stay here I'll go and have a look so anyway he's gone down the trains oh god he's had a look mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he's talking to a fucking two or three people in the middle of these two trains and I'm huh? like what the fuck's going on here <laughs> he's come back and he's gone it's all right it's the TPG boys <laughs> So there's another crew in the yard at the same time. Fucking TPG, come yeah. on. So um, Wow. So, uh, and bearing in mind, this is my first experience, right? So we've got up to the train and the TPG lot have spread out down this side, the LDS lot down this side, and there's me in the middle, right? <laughs> I've done the shittiest piece <laughs> you can ever, ever oh. imagine, right? If it's your first time... You don't cut it off properly at the bottom. Mm. You don't get your spacing right. You don't fill it in properly. It, it was fucking shit, right? Mm-hmm. However, I looked down my right, LDS, looked down my left, TPG. I could see, like, the, the reflection of the moon, right, on the steel of the train, right? Oh. I can hear the rattle of the cans. Good, that's good. I can see the fumes of the paint. <laughs> evaporating yeah. and I tell you what it was it was one of the moments where you just go I'm fucking all in my life is changing from this moment I tell you what I am committed to this my <laughs> god well tell you the podcast we do with Don's inside this place come on tell me that don't move you wow <gasps> um it's a real snapshot isn't it of what um the the, the, the the mythology of, of which is romantic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, uh, it was just one of those moments. So it, when you, you just, you just know you got a feeling inside. That's it. I'm fuck it. This is me. This is my life. And I, I lived and breathed graph for the next three years. Like i um, I was all in everything about my life. Like every waking moment was thinking about graph, racking paint doing outlines, mm. planning, like, spots. Do you, know, you know, like, mm. it was everything. Is it? Absolutely everything to me. Um, chase is like a heroin chase. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an addiction. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and then I went on to do quite a bit within those couple of years, to be honest. Um, that was probably, well, that was the point where I was a, an active writer. Do you know what I mean? Fetch, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the age, <laughs> rolling. Yeah. What other writers did you come across? I mean, TPG, the, the fucking... The, the, yeah. You know, that's no, my it was, no, it was... Um, so, well, we had... Um, so the LDS 
um, they had a lot of like European connections. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, um, what the way it worked was there was like a little network of writers across Europe. Mm -hmm. So you would host people. So European writers would come over here. And we would, ho as a crew, we'd host them. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know where they stayed. I think they stayed at what Summer's house, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'd take them out. You would, like, help them get paint. You'd take them to the yard and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And then that was, like, the favour was returned. So if you then went to France or mm -hmm. Barcelona, like, Italy, anything like that, that favour was then returned, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so I never travelled for Graf. Again, being, being like 15, it's not really, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not that easy to just go, yeah. oh, yeah, mum, I'm See you later, mum, be back later. <laughs> when you're 21, 22, yeah. you can get away with that. It's but not your local co-op. <laughs> it's certainly not that, that so, kind of journey. Mm. So I didn't get that experience or opportunity, but I met a lot of writers that came over. Mm. So we had like, um, I don't know how much you know about like, the older sort of European graph, but like we had like the SDK crew, mm -hmm. uh, PME crew. And mm. um, there was one writer called Riot. I think it was from France. He came over quite a few times. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was quite nice to have that kind of, again, being such a young person propelled into this situation, mm. it was like a, like a birth of fire. Do you know what I mean? It was. Yeah, did you feel like a prospect? Did you feel like people were seeing you as a young kid, like aspiring? Yeah, I, I would say so. And I felt the need to kind of improve quickly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I think a couple of pieces after that, like that fucking car crash piece, the first one I did, I thought, right, I'm going to fucking nail the next one, okay? So this one needs some serious fucking planning put into it. So I worked on my outline and really thought about the spacing. So mm. it's like when you like hit a train, you've got like different sections of a train so you've got like the middle panel which i'd call like almost like the prime spot then you've got like the the end panels where you might have doors or like the start of the driver's cabin stuff like that yeah. and i knew i wanted to get a middle middle spot i wanted like that fucking symmetry do you know again I mean? this is from back in the day we're not condoning this in any way people all right don't try this in your own personal time as you were carry on <laughs> so, so yes hypothetically that's that's what happens yeah no, Go exactly on, yeah. so plotted this piece out and um I knew I needed some decent paint. Mm -hmm. So, like, everything back in the day was racked. Like, you, you never bought paint, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It just wasn't the fucking, like, it's not like what it is now. Mm. Um, so, but on this one occasion, I thought, I need some, I need some decent paint, like, decent paint. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to smash this piece. So, there was a, uh, a Belton shop up Holloway Road. Um, it was like a car Rare. shop that sold Belton, basically. Rare, yeah, yeah. Um, it was one of the, one of a handful that you could actually go and get decent mm. paint from, and uh, I I invested like I don't know like ten or fifteen quid into getting like two or three decent cans of Belton, mm -hmm. and then I racked the rest. I don't know it was like high coat or um, mm -hmm. stone chip or something like that, and um, yeah, so I, I plotted out this piece, and um, yeah, and I, and I done it, and to to this day it's still one of my favourite pieces I've ever done. So um, good. And, uh, yeah, and I, I don't know how they knew this, but, like, the LDS boys, they said to me it was going to it, it was gonna run this train. And, I, and they told me which side it would be on and, like, where to be at that moment in time. Wow. So I was at school at the time, mm. and I told pretty much half the school... Really? ..a train's going to roll in, quarter to nine, be there. So I had half the school waiting on this fucking platform. Stop it. And train after train came in, nothing, right? And I was like, fucking hell. They were going, like, what's happening? We're going to be late. We're going to be late. And I was like, just wait for one yeah, more, patience, one more. Patience. And I'll tell you what, this train rolled in. And I've got a picture of it now. Really? Like, yeah, a runner with all the people, all the people going to work on it and that. And um, it rolled in. I was like, fucking hell. This is what it's all about. Really? Just, and just blew your mind blew my fucking mind and um and then just went to school that day with a massive grin on my face yeah. <laughs> and lots of free tuck money yeah exactly man so uh, that's incredible yeah this secret society kids have a way i mean especially if they if they know the code you know if they've had one or two uh, butterfly knives to the neck they'll know <laughs> you know to keep stum yeah but your whole school were very much aware of what yeah you were about. yeah i mean 
again, naivety, do you know what I mean? I think if I was 21, there's no way I'd be doing that. But 15, mm. you just want that that moment, do you know what I mean? That yeah. moment of glory. Yeah. And to be honest, when I say half a score, it wasn't like random. It was it was all my crowd, do you know what I mean? Mm. It was all the all the. You must have been the coolest fucking kid in the fucking school, guys. I still love the piece, man, honestly. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So putting your mind to it and achieving the the, the unthinkable. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Um, But I still apply that kind of like the, the level of thought that went into that. And I felt I sort of like reaped the reward from it, if you know what I mean. And so, and that, that never left me. Mm. So even to this day, what I do now, I, like I don't, I don't just rock up to a wall and freestyle. Like I, I totally rate people that do. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, massive props to people that do. Mm. But me personally, I plan it out to with a with an inch of its fucking life. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I, I could show you digital versions of my wall pieces. And I quite sometimes like send them in like the WhatsApp groups I'm in with like other uh, writers and stuff, and I go like spot the difference, like as a little joke. Do you know what I mean? It's and they, well, they, and it's a, because you can't tell the difference. Well, it's borderline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that there, is there a condition for that? Don't know. Probably. Fucking, yeah, 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 yeah. People that do that interest me the most because um, it's it's very. You can, in fact, you know where it comes from. It's like you can be a little bit compromised, and okay, because. This X Y Z was there. I wasn't able to get it exactly right, or I didn't yeah. have that certain thing. Um, I'm always impressed when people, you know, was it fail to plan? Plan yeah, to yeah, fail. Yeah. Or fail to pro- fail. What is it? Fail. To, fail. To fail pl- to plan. Plan to fa- plan, plan to, fail. to fail. Yeah. Comment below. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yo, that's something else. And the other thing as well about that, and um. And only in my experience do I find it the most labour intensive of it all is the preparation, the finding time to sketch or get a thing down yeah. that you're happy with, let alone transferring it over yeah. to, to the place you want it. But th- that's a lot of time to do that it stuff. It is, it is. I'm not going to lie, I paint probably once a month if I'm lucky, mm. probably more like once every six weeks because of the amount of time. Well, I don't have a lot of time anyway, like, I don't get a lot of spare time. So Mm. when I do get time, I have to use it wisely. So I'll do like a little hour of designing and then Mm. another week will pass and I'll do another hour of designing. Mm. Um, And it takes a lot of fucking time, to Mm. be honest. And me personally, like, I feel like you could argue I'm too far gone. I'm too far down a rabbit hole of planning pieces to come back to the stage of just free flowing on a wall. Mm. I would like to add that, that. That is probably the only thing I would probably try and add to my game or change is adding a little bit of like organic, you know what I mean? Sort of um, ad libbing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. When you when you um, t- t- so I'm led to believe um, four hundred and fifty. You know the deal for those riggers that watch. Ad libbing is part of a course of of. Uh, it's the opportunist in yeah. in a legal right, isn't it? Yeah, That's what yeah, it's yeah. all about, isn't it? Yeah. Um, was that was that time in which you were out there fully sold on writing? I mean, you know, we're talking up to the age of fifteen at the moment, but you know, this carries on. Yeah. Did, was that like a an apprenticeship of cutting chops and learning shit like that that maybe you wouldn't have been able to apply now, but gave you the opportunity to? How many, how many skills you got? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, back in the day, um, I kind of liked the fact that I didn't have the tools that I've got today. Yeah. So, for example, when you rack paint, you get what you're given. Yeah. You make it work. So you just throw a load of colours together and you put a random outline on it and you make it work. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas now... I've got like color tools and shit to make sure I get the exact shade right Mm. from like 60% gray blending into 40% gray. Mm. And I've got like this blue blending into that. And it's like, it's so fine tuned. It really is. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of like look back with like fondness of those years of just having a random bag. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And just being able to just, I don't know, fucking, 
brown and blue fill with a pink outline and just 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 <laughs> rock it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It still happens now, doesn't it? No, exactly. A yeah. lot of writers still paint like that now, yeah, I and that I shit. admire that. Mm. I definitely. I, I I would like to be a bit more like that. Give us a good racking story. Right. Okay. Racking stories. Right. It's quite quick, actually. I was I'll expecting at least some sort of hesitancy. <laughs> I'll tell you man what. Got, right. Man got racking stories. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, how do I put this? People have said to me in the past, when I was younger, I had a trustworthy looking face, right? And that came with benefits, so you could just walk into a shop. The pixelation don't do him justice, people. You've got a trustworthy <laughs> looking face, yeah. Nod your hat. Mm -hmm. Afternoon. Mm. Afternoon. Oh, that's yeah. a nice young chap. It's exactly how, you, how he sounds. It's exactly <laughs> how he looks right now. Trust me, guys. Um, and, yeah, just walk in. Walk in. And uh, back in the day, I don't know whether you know this or not, but, like, the customary way to wrap paint back in the day was to slot it down... <sighs> Yeah. Around your waist. So you had like elasticated jogging bottoms yeah. on, and therefore you could put one can down there, it's held. You yeah. could put five cans down there, it's held. And then you put your hoodie back. It's like, like a back. bullet belt's worth of paint exactly. right around your body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. So fucking cool. And <laughs> <laughs> love it. And um, we used to spend the whole day just going into like DIY shops and that. Um, mm. well, you know, all your B&Qs and yeah. all that sort of stuff, home base. You'd get four or five cans, walk out little nod to the security card again, walk out, just be as nice as possible. Never go in more than like one or two at a time. Nice and casual. Yeah. Um, now, and that's how I learned to rap and that's how, we, you know, we was quite successful doing it mm. for quite a period. Now, there's another crew in East London called OT, right? Pick up OT. Yeah. Pick up OT yep. out there. Mm -hmm. um, and... They had a different style. And so I started knocking about with them. I was in OT for a little while and uh, I was knocking about with them. So you had like Burglar, mm -hmm. Defs, Hype. Um, big, big yeah. names in the game. Yeah. Big up them, man. And um, they had a, let's just say, a carefree way <laughs> of racking, right? <laughs> so we went down to this place once. I can't remember. It must have been like a home base or something. Now, they've just bowled straight in, right? All of us, mob, mob ended, right? Just went, went straight. Look, security cards clocked us straight away. They're following us. Walked straight up to the paint aisle, laughing and joking. Don't give a fuck. Just bosh, 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 bosh. Security guards are watching us, about to pounce, run out the store. We run out the front. The security cards running round this fucking, like doing rings round a car. They're just mocking him, mm -hmm. just laughing at him. And he's just chasing us. Oh, and in the end, he got tired. <laughs> and we just walked off. And I was like, fucking hell. Off, <laughs> I'm going yeah. on all like covert and stuff. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, honestly. Does that pay dividend in the amount you can pick up, though? It probably, yeah. Because you yeah. can just, like, if, you, if you're going to be that brazen, just yeah. fucking take a lot. Take a lot, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, true, true. So that you're taking a real little yeah, or a real yeah, huge yeah, amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you don't, it's time as well. So, like, rather than going in one by one or, you know, one or two at a time. Yeah, you limit your choice, you right? You just go in like five, six at a time, just yeah. take a lot and walk out. But so, you limit your choice. I mean, just grab and get. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. It's yeah. Inside so, that. yeah, knocked about with them for a little while. Um, and then the final crew that I was in was uh, STD, mm. which was, um, you had Pano. Khans, um and a bunch of other writers. Crazy. Wow, you man, you have done your bit. Yeah, yeah. I've got. About. It was a, it was a, it was an active time for me, mm. definitely. Um, and yeah, painted with them for I don't know about a year. Mm. Uh, big up Khans, big up Pano, mm, by the way. Old tight, old yeah, tight. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that kind of like fizzled out in the end. And then I went on and you know started work and all that sort of stuff mm. and just kind of. I don't know, put, that, put it all behind me, really. I just sort of closed that chapter mm. in my life and then just head down and got on with sort of like carving a, a path for myself. So you didn't get gripped or anything? There was nothing that, that, that almost forced your hand? No, I mean, I got like arrested mm. a couple of times, mm. but um comes back to the old trustworthy face. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trustworthy face, you see. 
So, some of your some of your yeah. mistrustworthy faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, better let it smile more. <laughs> this guy's got the cheeriest smile. So uh, yeah, and that, so it was just like one night in a cell mm. at the next day sort of job, mm. and um, and then moved on, and mm. then that was kind of like yeah, that was it. I still kept a, like a little interest in graft. Do you know what I mean? It never leaves you. Like mm. I'd always, I don't know, like you know, when you're on a train, you're like keep an eye out for like track sides and you know keep a little ear to the ground and that but i totally and utterly moved on to be honest really? i never kept in contact with anyone just moved on isn't it interesting this it's a it's a theory that and i i, I guess that the hardcore me share i share the same sentiment it's like there's an idealism in, in, a, in a graffiti writer it's just you know staying true and pushing through and staying real and to your to, to the core of what your, your the principles are of graph, but um, yeah, it can be it can be you can go one or two ways, can't it? Yeah. Um, and big shout out to all the all the dons out there that that still hold definitely fucking true to the yeah, yeah, to the yeah. cause. But it's it sounds to me like you probably made the right decision for you. Yeah, it's it it, it is a difficult one because I look back on some other people's experiences that carried on writing like into their. 20s and like i said earlier about like the um the european tours and stuff mm. like that i didn't do any of that do you know what i mean and i think i would have liked to have done that that would have been wicked wouldn't it yeah definitely yeah they had a different sort of toleration to compared to, to, yeah. to london of its time didn't it but even also not just the illegal side mm. the graph side um seeing how certain writers progressed in mm. the art world mm to move on to really big things. Did that inspire you to see that? I, no, I'd say, no. Mm. Um, like, because obviously I wasn't really aware at the time. It's now looking back in hindsight. So like, I've been back now two years. Mm. Now seeing people that I knew as writers back mm. in the day um, have now carved like a successful career mm. as a fully fledged artist. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, perhaps that could have been another path. Do you know what I mean? Rather than closing mm. the door, I could have kept a foot in the door, carried on with work and potentially pursued the art career. Mm. So I'm kind of like playing catch up now, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I do know what you mean. It's a funny one though. Sometimes I feel, I mean, everything at the right time in the right place. Yeah. I'm, I'm and I've said this a bunch of times on the podcast, I understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea. And I also understand that for some people, Having some people do street art when they've been the truest and most successful in in raw graffiti doesn't quite t uh, tally up, um, and can sometimes be quite a lot to kind of process that new move that they make. Yeah, as opposed to like street artists that just start a street art, yeah. and they carry on that street yeah, art. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, yeah. all of that. I love all yeah. the street art stuff too. Yeah, do you know what I think? Like, for, like now, as I said, I've been back for a little while, and having like a bird's eye view of like the scene in general, mm. I do think there's like, it's a big old playground mm. and there's enough space for mm. everyone to do what they want to do. 100%. Do you know what I mean? People that want to carry on just bombing, mm. do it. Like yeah. people that want to do fucking stencils. And, yeah, 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 totally. Do you know what I mean? There's go, a big enough it, yeah. space for yeah. everyone to do what they want now. Three, three names that spring to mind immediately is Teach... Um, Arrow and Tempo 3-3 from yeah. Birmingham. Yeah, These yeah, guys... Smashed it. Yeah, and so multiver so versatile, yeah, yeah, whether it's yeah. fashion or, you know, products or stickers. And, you know what yeah, I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. it really is like a, f you know, all bets are off now, isn't it? No, exactly. I, I, I consider all three of them to be like an inspiration, to mm. be honest. They've, they've proven that you can stay true to your graffiti roots and heritage mm. without chucking it away mm. but still pursue like a commercial mainstream like um like living or do you know what i mean like yeah, like thousand percent. yeah um so it is definitely an inspiration to be honest. and then you get like people like ein who also again a, a huge powerhouse of, a, of yeah, an artist yeah, yeah. in his own right you know he just he, he changed the shape of east london he you know yeah. he he changed the, the the aesthetic you know what i mean and a handful of others definitely yeah yeah i would say he was quite heavily responsible for east london like shoreditch and those kind of areas changing like sabo before he was before the the big circus letters it was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he exactly. was doing it. yeah yeah and he, i think he like i've i've seen a few things where he said like iron said that uh, 
he liked the fact that you could just rock up to a wall, paint like circus letters, and no one gives a fuck. Hmm. If you do like a London style dub, people are like, oi, what are you doing? Like tagging mm. a wall of like, you know, whatever. But the minute it's something that's a bit more acceptable, people love it. Mm. And now, like we're way, we're way past that. Now, yeah. like if ever I paint, I haven't painted in East London for a while now, to be honest, like on the street. Um, but when I was, like, I think last year, I painted quite a lot on the street in East London. It's fuck, it's madness out there. Honestly, you get queues of people wanting to talk to you. So yeah. I, one, honestly, honest to God, I had a piece while I was doing it. I had a queue. And each one would come up to me and be like, oh, hello, you know, like, can I have a selfie or, you know, speak to me forever. Unthinkable. They would go on, then another... And then, like, you've got people coming up to you with, like, cameras, like, in your face. You're like, mate, fucking hell, at least say hello. Do you know what I mean? Yo. Like, they, it's like you're some sort of, like, circus act or something. But there's, there's got to be a, a, the business model here, guys. There's got to be... Something. Like, if you've got, like, a load of people taking photos, there's just got to be somebody that, you know, whether it's a member of your crew or something, that, that in an evening would be on lookout for, <laughs> <laughs> for trackies or something. You know, just yeah, be there yeah. in the day yeah, and kind yeah. of, like, taking some money off of these people for the flicks, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, just for the prosperity of it, they want it but you want yeah. you know what i mean like it means you get to buy yeah, some paint and yeah, yeah. stuff you know? so many people say to me can't you monetize what you're doing do you know what i mean like can't you yeah mm. make some money out of what you're doing and i say to them like for me personally like i just love doing this do you mm. know what i mean it's not really something that i've been pursuing to earn money out of mm. like i i enjoy painting i enjoy getting out there on the street i enjoy putting pieces up i enjoy posting them on instagram so people can see them and i'm not looking for anything in return mm. but i suppose there always comes a point where you think but could i could i do something do you know what i mean um and i don't know when that point's going to come um right okay sorry i'm gonna i have to because yeah, yeah. i feel like i think about this a lot um that's i think that that's loosely based on the peer pressure of the people that are seeing what you're doing ultimately it's flattery because what you're doing is clearly fucking awesome and should be monetized but there's this thing so to the joe public or even your family friends people that are close to you that see you go out and do a piece now if you do it illegally their immediate criticism is why are you wasting paint? Why are you damaging something? Yeah. Why can't you be doing something better? You should really get into the, right? Yeah. Okay, so cool. Let's eliminate some of the illegality out of it. You go to a, um, uh, a, a hall of fame or a tolerated area yeah. and you pay for the paint yeah. and you go and do it. And even then you still get critiqued. What? You're wasting all your money on that. Yeah. 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 You, what, yeah. what you mean? You're, Paying for paint and yeah, you're not getting yeah, anything yeah. out of it. What are you telling me that next week it won't be there? Yeah. What, would you, <laughs> what? But you're so, you know, yeah, you're so XYZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is wrong with people? Why, why yeah. can't they understand that this is a thing that yeah. you like doing? Well, I'm not being funny, right? Look at golf, yeah. look at fishing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Two expensive hobbies. There you you need a lot of equipment, yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. Exactly the same. So, what's the difference with buying paint and going to paint? That's totally. what makes you happy. So, it is what it is. You throw the fish back at the end of the day. Yeah. You pick your golf ball up out of the hole. <laughs> it doesn't stay there. You've got to pay for membership, my yeah, friend. Yeah. And I tell so, you what, the, the, those those clubs, I mean, you know, they're a lot of money. Big up <laughs> Fade, by the way. Um, yeah. Uh, seriously, I don't know what people want out of, uh, out of uh, uh, this game, you know? Uh, yeah, do you know what? I get it all the time. And not just not just from the scene, I, like from people in my personal life as well. Why don't you do prints? Why don't you do canvases? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I'm like, yeah, but I've got a day job and this is my hobby. Mm. So like what I was saying earlier, there comes a point where you think, could I monetize it? How much could I make my hobby my day job? But for the time being, it's kind of, it's not really what I'm looking to do, if you know what I mean. Mm. But it's not to say it won't happen it in the future. It might happen, yes. You yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, you never know. yeah, yeah, definitely. There I'll might be an awesome charity that comes around and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. the opportunity is too good to be true. Yeah, no, do, definitely. Do you think some of them, um, do you think some of the, the motivation of you not doing it, this <laughs> might be a bit spicy, not too spicy, of course, um, the idea of competing on a street level, knowing full well that you probably could 
do some exhibitions, could probably sell some stuff, but actually there's an integrity there that makes you want to compete with the people on a street level that are in those exhibition places. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I mean, because you could argue, like, what I've been doing, like, quite often I get, like, like a load of, um, like, timber boards and that, and mm. I paint them at my workshop, and then I'll go and put them up somewhere. You could argue, like, I'm making art that essentially could be in an exhibition, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, and and I'm doing it for nothing. I'm mm. just, do you know what I mean? And mm. that's why people sometimes say to me, like, what a fucking waste of time and money. And I'm like, well, it makes me happy. So yeah. what's the what's the big deal? Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I, 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 I've I definitely enjoyed doing the, the whole boards thing. So, um, like, as opposed to just simply painting somewhere and then, like, a week later it, disappears if you know what I mean yeah. so um like there's I've got that one um the last supper which mm -hmm. I painted um and put up outside Shoreditch High Street station so you actually and, put it up yeah 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 oh, right okay um, check that out insta come on <laughs> and uh that's stayed up for about a year now oh, God, all right. and I'll put it up high yeah and yeah it's been there for about a year now wow. and um I like to think it's kind of like becoming a little not like a iconic thing but you know like the longer it's there the more people kind of mm. associate that area with that piece and they'll put almost bit like you're almost creating a bit of history with it if you know what I mean. in prosperity doesn't it yeah. it becomes part of the furniture yeah exactly yeah, yeah that's what I, I, I cut that appeals to me if you know what I mean yeah yeah especially uh -oh. being east as well because that it becomes a it becomes it's a, 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 a part of the identity an area that you grew up in and that you yeah yeah it's really cool <laughs> i love it when writers you know i always, and i've said it before i love it when i come in from a tour coming from a show and the moment i see a certain tag i know i'm home yeah 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 <laughs> you know no, it's true home. man it's true <laughs> definitely yeah, no, yeah, yeah yeah you can almost like blindfold someone put them on a train and then they just look out the window and they'll see like a few tags and so, be like well good. i know this geezer's from that area i know where i am yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I i love it yeah. I, I love northwest for the same reasons of, yeah, as, yeah. As, as, uh, as you would east you know yeah. um so what, what do you do now what's what's your day job what do you do as a living because obviously you've got the graph but, yeah, but you're also in yeah, art yeah. with with your work as well you? so um i do like a, a like a multitude of things really um i'd say number one graphic designer i know it's the old cliche like people going oh yeah people started off in graft end up a graphic designer or it's either graphic designer or tattoo artist mm -hmm. they're the two <laughs> trades that people go into um and so big up all the tattooists yeah big up, all big the, up uh, definitely yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah there's some quality mm. uh tattoo uh writers that have turned into tattoo artists um yeah so graphic design and then um there's a massive like resurgence of neon out there at the minute. And I've been making like, it's LED mm. neon. So it's not like actual glass blown neon. Right. It's the, like the fake or the faux, whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, LED version. Yeah. And um, I make tons of it. So I make that myself in my workshop um, and then fit that for other people. So I've spent years making stuff for other people and now it's almost like I'm kind of becoming my own customer. So it's like, now actually yeah. I want to make my own neon sign today. Do you know That's what I mean? Sick. Rather than someone else's neon sign. Give me a, give me a, a description of, the, of a neon sign. Are you talking about, because sometimes I see the sponsored posts on socials and... Well, actually, I've got a little parting gift for you. Go on then. We've got a uh, plug socket anywhere. Hey, what are you doing? What you got? Stop it. We might have a plug socket here. Let's have a look, see what we got. What is the, what the doggins is this? All right. Have you plugged that in, man? Oh, yeah. That one now. <gasps> For those that you are um, listening and not watching, something, something is happening on the podcast that's never happened before. Right. <laughs> you got the button? Oh, stop it. Hey! <laughs> fucking A! Yo, sorry, I'm being extremely fucking rude. Uh, only has done me a neon Keller 
orange, yellow, well, yellow into orange into red into purple, purpley pink, actually. Yeah. Pink. It looks fantastic. Bro, I am absolutely gassed. I can't believe it. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks That's for having me on. That's my little uh, parting gift for you. That's incredible. This is going up on the wall of shame. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Boom. no worries, man. My guy, thank yeah, you. No worries, bruv. <sighs> Too much for my head for one day already. And it's only Thursday. Big shout out to Only Inside the Place. We're out like in was out of fashion. You'll be seeing more of this sign on the on the wall. <laughs> Uh, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Killer Keller podcast. Out like him was out of fashion. So it is, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Well, unless you're working for our guy only that's pulling out these fine uh, examples of, uh, of awesomeness. Listen, stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone else. I wouldn't. Peace. That's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible.